What is IPC? IPC stands for Instructions Per Cycle. And now, not to bust your chops or to break your brains, I, the best way to put IPC is, from my perspective, is if clock speed is the door, IPC is the king. Clock speed isn't the only factor that determines a CPU's speed, right? Like, you just can't see a high clock speed and be like, oh, that's a fast CPU, or this CPU is 4.7, this one's 4.9, oh, that's a fast CPU. Yes and no. IPC definitely still, very much still plays a factor. Now, say clock speed is the door and IPC is the key. That's because the clock speed is where you want to is what you want to get to, but the, the the key, the performance is behind the door. So to unlock that performance, this is where IPC comes into play and how it serves as the integral key here in this scenario. Now, with every tick of the clock, right, the CPU, the CPU will fetch and execute an instruction, right? So it will you say I want to go get this or I want to calculate this, it will send it out. And it'll wait for it to come back, right? It'll say, hey, we need to do something. It's, it said, click this. What does that instruction mean, right? Now, the clock speed, your clock speed is measured in cycles. If your CPU has a clock speed of 2 gigahertz, that can carry out 2,000 million, 2,000 million or 2 billion cycles per second. It's an insane amount of numbers. But this is why IPC isn't as flashy or sexy as clock speed. IPC is like miles per gallon for your CPU, right? That literally determines how much bang for your buck you're honestly going to get. IPC is something we talk about loosely, and it's something we address over a few live streams, right? And, uh, and maybe once or two loosely in a couple videos. Just know here recently with Ryzen, AMD has been playing catch up. They really kept, they caught up and slightly exceeded Intel in terms of IPC with Ryzen 5000. Then Intel came with 11th generation, and now they're playing this TikTok game back and forth of who's going to win the IPC crown. When AMD toted a 90% IPC uplift versus Ryzen 3000, even I was like, oh, AMD is doing it. And it might have even been that video where I had made the declaration that AMD no longer wants to be viewed as the value-centric budget option, budget-oriented option, no longer here in the community, right? Now... That doesn't necessarily mean that AMD is wrong and with you know with their price hike. They just tell, they're saying that premium. You're gonna pay for that IP IPC performance uplift. This is what makes Ryzen 5000 significantly faster. This is how AMD was able to jump, have such a performance jump from Ryzen 3000 to Ryzen 5000. It is like like 15 to 20 percent. They were not BSing with that number, at least from the benchmarks I've studied and researched over the since. Ryzen 5000 has launched last year. It it is about a 15 percent, the 15 to 20 percent IPC performance uplift. Now let me give you uh, a little help to how to measure your IPC, how to measure IPC, or even determine if a CPU has strong IPC. You could take two CPUs, let's say a Ryzen 5 16, 1600X and an 8700K. Both of them have six cores and 12 threads, right? Both of them can run at 4 gigahertz. You may have to manually input that. Both can run at 4 gigahertz. You run both of those CPUs at the same clock speed, at the same frequency. What's going to be the determining factor then of which one is faster will be IPC. Okay? That is how you can determine if a CPU um what what's this IPC and how we're even how us testers are, when we benchmark how we're even able to make that comparison. Again, even as a, you could take a 3800X and a 9900K. They both have eight cores and 16 threads. The 9900K has a turbo of up to five gigahertz on a single core or 4.9 or 4.8 gigahertz on a single core. The 3800X, I believe, has a turbo up to 4.2 or 4. I believe it's 4.2 or 4.3 on a single core. But that CPU should have no issues at running like 4.2. 4.2, 4.3 gigahertz all clock frequency, and the same with the 9900K. So to determine the IPC, you're going to run both of those CPUs at the same clock speed. They both have the same amount of cores, fam. What is the one constant that we're not changing that you don't even have any control to change? That is your IPC. That is why clock speed is the door and IPC or instructions per cycle is the key. Because the performance is behind the door. The clock speed won't get you to the performance alone. Hell, the IPC won't get you to the performance alone. 
Okay. You saw this in, in the pile driver and bulldozer CPUs. Yeah, oh, AMD, oh, 5 gigahertz. They, they didn't have strong IPC. So that 5 gigahertz on that 9590, if you want to, if you want receipts with what I'm talking about, watch that FX 9590 video we did in year one. Okay. I overclocked that CPU to 5 gigahertz. Okay. Did it meet, did it yield a significant, I mean, it, at that point, it's running faster than the 1600X I was running. Did that mean it was, or faster in terms of clock speed? Does that mean it was faster? right in terms of performance no absolutely positively not and that's because the 1600x had a P ipc uplift over P pile driver i keep wanting to say pile dozer i'm just gonna say pile dozer to combine the two architectures but it had a 15 to 20 percent performance uplift versus those two architectures so this is why although pile driver and bulldozer had higher you know overclocks and higher boosts they weren't faster cpus okay Ryzen 5 definitely still was like winning at that point. And again, this is why clock speed is the door and IPC is the key. Okay. Now, your IPC can be measured. I know I said this before, but I want to repeat that. So we had a few more people come into this segment. And this is, I see this is off. This is, this confuses a lot of buyers. And it's something you shouldn't, I don't want you to even put a whole lot of stock into when you're making your buying decision just know don't get caught up in the allure of clock speeds it's not all just about the cpu's clock speed okay ipc very much is an important role but there's so much math involved behind it again when we say a cpu that's running at two gigahertz or 2000 megahertz a cpu running at 2000 gigahertz can carry out 2000 and million six to simplicity two billion cycles per second that is ins insanely fast. If you want to know why CPUs generate heat, that's why. All that friction, all that movement, and all that you know, uh, introduction of heat and energy needs to go somewhere. This is why CPUs generate heat. This is why your CPU gets you know hotter than your than your graphics card. Your graphics card can slow itself down, run at you know 90 degrees C, and be perfectly fine. But your CPU. That bad boy was shut down because it'll just progress. It could scale. It could just continue to get hot and hot and hot if the heat isn't properly being dispersed off of the IHS. The IHS is the integrated heat spreader. That's the top that you see here that says core on our visual aid behind the letters instructions per cycle right, right here. Which IPC originally stood for Institute for, man, something other. I forgot. But it was originally named after the institute that coined the coin, that coined the term IPC okay, or instructions per cycle. But this is what is commonly known now and this is why it's so important. That's because it really boils down to how, you know, how, how fast can your CPU fetch and execute those instructions. So you, this is why you want your CPU to have strong IPC, not necessarily, but just strong IPC, being able to handle those executions rather quickly. Your clock speed is going to help that CPU run quickly though. Right. So you can think of jogging in the marathon. Hey, I got good IPC. Right. I'm running at two gigahertz. But then I look to my right or to my left and I see here come that, you know, here come the, the 11, 700 K with slightly stronger IPC there. So they're able to run slightly quicker, more efficient than I am. So since they're able to run more efficiently than me, their clock speed is going to help them move faster than I am. That is the biggest difference to if hopefully that didn't confuse anybody. But if, if a dude, let me know, let me know. But IPC, I had to include this into our five tips to know before you're buying or building a gaming PC, especially if you are building a gaming PC. So you know what kind of performance level or performance metric to expect, right? This whole segment, if you will, if we switch back to our title card and that's basing your CPU off of your needs knowing if you need a six core an eight core do you need a do you even need a four core eight thread cpu we had a